All right, so it's all about mushrooms today. We have our uh, portobello mushrooms stuffed with sweet sausage and some smoked mozzarella. And now we're gonna do uh, some grilled chicken with a shiitake mushroom vinaigrette. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our chicken breasts on the grill. Just rub them with a little bit of uh, canola oil and then some salt and pepper. And we're gonna cook them with the skin on. Whenever you're cooking chicken with the skin on, you wanna cook it slowly. Which is, I think, the opposite of the way a lot of people think to cook chicken. They think, oh, I wanna make the skin crispy, I'm gonna put it on the, on the hot part of the grill. You're just gonna burn the skin, you're gonna have flabby skin that's not crispy, and that's not good. Slow part of the grill, sort of around the edges. Salt and pepper. You can see our mozzarella is starting to melt there. And then uh, we're gonna take our shiitake mushrooms. A little canola oil. We're gonna grill our shiitake mushrooms for our shiitake mushroom vinaigrette. Make sure you take the stems off these as well. We're gonna cover the grill now. We're gonna let our chicken and our shiitake mushrooms cook. We'll let our portobello mushrooms rest. We got some uh, chicken breasts on the grill. All we did with the chicken is put a little salt and pepper and some oil. We let the skin get nice and crispy, slowly. Turned it over, put the uh, grill top back on and let it cook through. So that took about, uh, I would say about 15 minutes. All right, and our chicken breasts nice and thick too, so hopefully they're gonna be good and juicy. So we have our chicken breasts. And then we have our shiitake mushrooms here that we grilled as well. We're gonna make a shiitake mushroom vinaigrette. Let's go do it. All right, shiitake mushrooms that we grilled. When I say a vinaigrette, it's not gonna be like a smooth dressing. It's basically gonna be, um, you know, big pieces of the shiitake mushrooms. A little bit of balsamic vinegar. And balsamic vinegar is gonna be a little acidic, but it's also gonna be kind of sweet. And then we're gonna take some, uh, some olive oil, some salt and pepper, and just a touch of Dijon mustard. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use whole grain mustard. Okay, I'm just gonna mix it together. It's not gonna be one of those vinaigrettes that are emulsified. It's actually gonna be, the, uh, the oil and vinegar is gonna be a little bit separate, but I think it's gonna look really pretty on the plate. So I'm gonna take some fresh parsley, and I'm just gonna tear the parsley. I'm just gonna tear the parsley leaves, throw it into the vinaigrette. Now we can plate it. Put the vinaigrette down on the plate. Mm. Looks luscious. And we can cut up our chicken. And I'm, just, I'm gonna leave the chicken in, in fairly large pieces. See how crispy the chicken is? Crispy on the outside and nice and juicy on the inside. Just cook through. Maybe a little parsley in the middle. And there it is, very simple. Shiitake mushroom and balsamic vinaigrette with a crispy chicken breast. I'm gonna do some uh, spice rubbed chicken breast. All right, so some ancho chili powder, a little bit of cumin, some cinnamon, and I'm gonna add a little bit of brown sugar, and that's gonna be my spice rub. Good contrast, a little sweet, a little spicy. I'm actually gonna put my chicken breast on the fire here. And then uh, I have a, a very, very simple spice rub that I made up. It's just ancho chili, some cinnamon in here, and a little bit of cumin, and just uh, some brown sugar. So actually, it's gonna get like a little bit of a, of a caramelization on the outside because of the sugar. So spice rub side down over a nice hot grill. Let's see what happens here. Here's the simple technique of the day. I put the chicken breast down, leave it alone. 
Don't start, you know, messing with it, seeing if it's sticking or not, because that's when things start sticking to the grill. We just want to leave it alone, let the grill do its job, let the spice rub not only impart flavor, but also become a crust on the outside of the chicken. And the only way that's going to happen is if you let the grill do its job. My chicken is done. I'm going to take the chicken out and just let it rest for a little while. When the chicken feels firm, that means that, means that it's cooked all the way through. If it has any given it, that means it's still a little rare inside. And the one thing about chicken is either done or it's not done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tortillas. We're going to heat these up on the grill as we're plating them because we want them to be nice and pliable and just a little bit warm while we're eating them. So I'm going to make you a, a quick plate here. I'm going to make you uh, guys a couple of open-faced tacos. So we're going to start with a little bit of chicken. This is the chicken with the, uh, with the spice rub on it. Okay. A little ancho chili, some brown sugar. That made a really nice crust on it. Oh, yeah. yeah, it makes a nice crust on it, keeps the juices in, hopefully. All right, then we're going to take some of our barbecued onions and just a little bit of every little thing so you can still close up the, uh, the taco. Some grilled poblanos, avocado, and you know what? I'll just give you a little bit on the side, too, Solid. just to have it. And then um, just a touch of coleslaw just on top just to give it some crunch. That's great. In the dictionary, under the word versatility, there's a picture of a great big chicken. Why? Because it's versatile. You can make tacos with it. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a grilled tomatillo salsa. We're going to grill all the ingredients. We have some red onions, some tomatillos. They look like green tomatoes, but in fact, they're not. They're actually in the gooseberry family. We're going to take the husk off, and that's what you have. And it's really like a giant gooseberry. Here, look inside. OK, so we're going to uh, put all these in a, in a bowl with some serrano chilies and even a little garlic, a little oil, salt and pepper. Mix them together. Let's get them on the grill. Even the garlic, just a little grill flavor. Then what I'm going to do, just cook them in a pan a little bit more, all these, ing all these ingredients. Now we're making a salsa, so we're going to need oil anyway. So we're just going to put a little more oil in there. And we'll let that cook. All right. Now we can make our salsa. Tomatillos, the onion, the garlic, and the chilies. Lime juice. All right, so we want a lot of cilantro for this. We want this to be green. Just a touch of olive oil. A little bit of honey. Now we have salsa verde. So we have our chicken. We're going to put some uh, fresh cilantro on the plate. And then we're going to serve it with some queso fresco, which is like a fresh Mexican style cheese. We have two kinds of tortillas. These are flour tortillas. And actually, these are made with, with red chilies in them. And these are blue corn tortillas. Blue corn is probably my favorite ingredient. Flour tortillas, you can just sort of throw on the grill. But be careful, they go fast. Now, the, the corn tortillas, because they're a little bit firmer, what I like to do is just run them under water for a second, give it some moisture, and then put them on the grill. All right, let's make a taco. It's always important to try out things before your friends come over. Take a little blue corn tortilla, a little bit of chicken, some grilled tomatillo salsa, a little queso fresco, and a sprig of cilantro. Blue corn is the way to go. Salsa verde means green sauce. Even the little Spanish that I speak, or the Italian that I speak, 
I know that that translates to green sauce. And basically, every culture has its own version of a salsa verde or a green sauce. So I'm going to show you a sort of a Mediterranean one today. So you just need a few different ingredients. I'm going to use some chicken thighs, skinless and boneless. Again, if you, um, if you don't like ch chicken thighs and you want to use chicken breast, be my guest. I just like chicken thighs. I like, I like the flavor. I think they stay juicier. Chicken thighs is actually one of my favorite things to cook and to eat, for sure. So I'm going to start with those, but then we're going to have some fresh herbs for the salsa. We have uh, some parsley, some chives. We have some tarragon. And really, you can use any kind of fresh green herbs that you can find and combine them into this salsa verde. It'll be some lemon zest, a key ingredient. There's going to be some fresh garlic. I'm going to show you how to crush that. And then um, the sort of secret ingredient of this whole thing, in my opinion, some anchovies. I know you don't like anchovies. Your friends don't like anchovies. You do like them. You just don't know it. But they're really key to this dish. Now, if you don't want to eat anchovies, if you don't, if you don't eat fish or anything like that, you, obviously you can leave them out. It's just not going to be as good, I promise you. You have to tr you know, definitely give it a try. I'm going to put some crushed red peppers in mine, and then we're going to finish it with some delicious extra virgin olive oil. And that's going to sort of cap it all off. But first, let's get the, uh, the chicken cooking. And to me, it's, you know, I'm going to teach you some really simple techniques here in terms of you know, how to grill or, or um, saute some chicken. The key um, is to make sure that you season it really well with salt and pepper to start. And I like to use kosher salt. If, if you've seen me cook it all on the Food Network, you know that I use kosher salt all the time. It's actually like, uh, it's got big crystals. So what I do is I crush it in my fingers and I just, I, as, as it crushes, I just let it kind of um, rain on top of, the, uh, on top of the, the chicken thighs. Then I'm gonna take some, some black pepper Salt and pepper on both sides. And what you can do is, instead of, instead of kind of turning them over, you can put them on the grill and then season it while the other side is on the grill. So a little canola oil. And I like to use two kinds of oils in my kitchen for the most part. Canola oil to cook with and then extra virgin olive oil not to cook with. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually use this for the salsa verde and it's not gonna touch heat. So we're really gonna, um, you know, really going to uh, taste that, that nice fruity, spicy flavor and the viscosity of the olive oil. All right, so let's go to the grill. First things first, you need a hot grill. I'm cooking indoors at the Food Network kitchen. Hey, wave everybody. Um, and uh, obviously this is an indoor grill, but if you can cook outdoors, you know, be my guest. Same principles, you want a hot grill because we want a really nice crust on the outside of these chicken thighs. So we're gonna put the, uh, the chicken thighs on the grill. You can hear that sizzle right away. Salt and pepper, both sides. You can see I'm like salting it while it's on the grill. Let it um, get nice and crusty on one side for about three or four minutes. And then maybe when you turn it over, it might just take like another minute or so to cook through. So maybe a couple minutes less on chicken breast versus chicken thighs, but, um, but, more, but just as important, um, you want a really good contrast of texture. And the only way to get that is to let the grill do its job. That's really the key, okay? All right, let's take a look at our chicken. See, it's starting to get a little crusty. You can see that, and the salt and pepper is becoming part of the chicken itself. I'm just gonna turn them and cross, cross hatch them. But I'm gonna keep cooking them on the same side. The key is crusty, well seasoned, and then cook through. And then we're gonna let it rest. And then, you, and then we're just gonna douse with all this amazing salsa verde anyway. So if it doesn't look perfect, don't even worry about it because nobody's, nobody's gonna see it. We're gonna, we're gonna put this beautiful green sauce on top of it. All right, let's get to the sauce, all right? So fresh garlic. So when I, um, when I use garlic, I almost always use it in the crushed form. And I'll show you how I like to do that. So first I take the back of the knife. Okay, not this part of it, but this part of it. And I just, I kind of break up the, um, the head of the garlic into cloves. All right. And then I take, now you, now you have to get the skin of the cloves off of the meat of the garlic, right? So I'm gonna take, let's say, five of them. 
and I take my knife, I put the knife on top of it sideways, okay? And I take my, the palm of my hand and I just push down onto the, onto the garlic. And what it does is it actually helps the skin come away from the meat of the garlic. All right, then you can pick it up and it just makes it a lot easier to get the skin. You see, this is, the, this is, what, this is the meat of the garlic, that's the skin of the garlic. You just wanna get it to come away. Mmm, chicken smells really good. Here, check this out. See how nice and crusty that's getting? I still want more crust than that. Basically, anything I'm cooking, I want to have a nice crust on the outside. So, now we have our garlic, and we're gonna make a nice, uh, we're gonna pulverize the garlic and crush it so that when it goes into the salsa verde or you're cooking with it, you know, for some other application, that it basically dissolves into whatever you're making. Because, you know, I've been to a lot of like, not so great like Southern Italian restaurants where they have those big chunks of garlic in the sauce and then you bite into the garlic and it ruins your whole meal. I mean, garlic is a wonderful thing, but like too much of it at one time can really kind of just overpower whatever you're cooking or eating. All right, so we're gonna just start like a coarse chop like this. I would say like crushing garlic is probably the thing that I do more than anything else. And it's really important for me to get the garlic crushed and really fine. All right, now I'm gonna put a little salt on top of my garlic. No, I'm not seasoning the garlic, although that's gonna happen anyway, but I'm using the salt as an abrasive for my garlic and I'll show you what I'm trying to do. So now, first I'm just kind of coarsely chopping it, but now I'm gonna take the, back, the side of my knife and I just crush away. All right. There we go, crushed garlic, just like that. Right before your very eyes. Let's turn our chicken. That looks beautiful. Here, get in here. See how, see how crusty that is? That's what you wanna see. So you can see, the, the heat of the grill on this side was hotter, and this got crustier. This side, not as good, all right? I don't wanna see that. Just because there's grill marks on it doesn't mean it's, it's the texture that you want. You know, and you see a lot of chicken that looks like this. This is what you really want. You want this really good contrast of texture. You want that good crust that, that's formed with the salt and pepper and the high heat of the grill. All right. Now we're gonna take uh, some anchovies. This is the secret ingredient here, folks. So we're gonna take a couple of anchovies. I'm gonna chop these up as well. I'm gonna put these in with our garlic. And I love this sauce because you, you're basically, I, I call this like a cutting board sauce because everything is just gonna be on the cutting board and chopped together. And then we're just gonna finish it with a little bit of olive oil in a bowl and you're done, all right? So we take a whole bunch of herbs. So when you, need, you need more herbs than you usually think you need because you know, when you see them in bunches, they look like, they look very um, uh, voluminous. You know, they look like they have a lot of volume to them. But when you chop them, they really kind of, they kind of melt down. So we have the parsley, I mean, yeah, we have the, the flat leaf parsley, we have the tarragon. I love this dish. And then we have the chives. And we're just gonna chop these all together. And these can be coarsely chopped. I'm gonna put the garlic in there with the herbs. So now, we have the crushed garlic, we have the chopped anchovies, 
And then we have the coarsely chopped herbs all together. All right, so we have, we have all this chopped together. I'm gonna put this into a bowl. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of lemon zest. A little bit of lemon zest. Now if I put lemon juice in here, it's gonna actually cook the herbs like enzymatically. It's gonna, it's gonna turn them gray. It's gonna, they're gonna lose a little bit of their freshness. So I don't wanna do that. But I want that lemony flavor and the acidity from the lemon zest. And this is a great way to, to, to utilize the part of the lemon like a lot of people don't even use. So make sure you utilize it. And then a little bit of crushed pepper. You don't have to do this. I like my, my food a little spicy almost always. So I'm always gonna kind of reach for chili peppers and, and stuff like that. And then, in, and then salt and pepper in here as well. And then we just fold in the olive oil into the herbs until it forms like a, um, almost like a chimichurri or a, uh, like a very herbaceous vinaigrette. You're just basically dressing the herbs and the um, garlic and the anchovies with the olive oil. And that's really the kind of consistency that you want. You want it to be very herbaceous, very kind of chunky in a way. And then as you put it on the hot chicken, what's gonna happen is the, uh, the olive oil will kind of spill out and, be, and, and form its own sauce. Now we're gonna put it in another bowl. I mean, it looks great, but you don't have to do it, especially if you're just gonna like put the sauce on top of the chicken. But let's just make believe we're actually gonna serve this to the table. If I was at home, I would never do this. I would just serve it right, into the, right in the bowl because I hate cleaning dishes and I'm not even, I'm not good at it. So I try to make the least amount of, uh, of dishes I can. All right, so now we have our chicken. Our chicken is cooked through. And the way I can tell that is that the chick, when I touch the chicken like this, you see a lot of chefs and cooks like touch it like to see what the story is. It, it, it's very firm and it bounces back right away. If there was a lot of give to it, that mean it would still be rare in the middle. But I now, I, know, I now know this chicken is cooked. I'm gonna go right to the plate. And you know, you wanna let the chicken rest before you eat it because you want the juices to stay in when you cut it so they, they stay intact. And the only way that's gonna happen is if they cool down. But um, I'm gonna put the salsa verde on top of the chicken while it's still warm because it's gonna, it's gonna just kind of, um, it's just gonna bring out the, uh, the natural oils and flavors of the herbs themselves. And um, kind of, you know, because the chicken is still warm, it's gonna sort of seep into the pores of the chicken and, and, and make the chicken incredibly flavorful. All right, so I'm gonna take some of our salsa verde. I mean, this is it. I mean, we're ready to eat this. This is chicken dinner right here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Mmm, that smells good. There you go. We have the grilled chicken with the salsa verde. Mm. The first word that comes to mind is bright. It's, uh, you know, the herbs make it incredibly bright and fresh, very refreshing, and um, it's got crazy flavor. I mean, don't forget, you have the garlic and the anchovies in there running through these mixture of, of all the fresh herbs, and it's, uh, it, it, it's a classic Italian green sauce for a reason. It just kind of lights up any protein that you cook. We're not frying chicken today, but I'm gonna try to emulate those exact flavors, but on the grill. When I make fried chicken, one of the first things I do is I make a brine out of buttermilk. Now the buttermilk is in there to create tenderness and moisture in the chicken itself. I'm gonna put in a couple different chili powders. We have some ancho chilies, fruity with a little bit of heat. New Mexico chili, it's a little bit brighter and uh, it has a little more heat to it. And then some chili de arbol powder. I like to say it's cayenne with flavor, so it's, got, it's definitely gonna have some heat to it. And then some cascabel chili. It almost tastes like um, if tea was spicy. It has sort of an herbal flavor to it, but with some heat. And then we have some other spices in here as well. We have some smoked paprika, some ground coriander, granulated garlic and onion powder, and then we have a little bit of cinnamon. Lots of layers of flavor in there. Smokiness, fruitiness. We have some sweet spices like the cinnamon. All right, so we're gonna pour some of the marinade over the chicken. I cut the chicken into pieces. So that's the white meat, and then we have the dark meat. 
The thighs, which is my favorite, by the way, they always are the moistest part of the chicken. Just love the chicken thighs. We're gonna let this sit for at least four hours or overnight. It's totally fine. Let me show you what I've done here. I've patted it dry, and then what I do is I sort of air dry it. I take the cover off and leave it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes so that the marinade actually becomes part of the skin. It actually dries right onto the skin. And now we can grill. And while that's happening, I can actually start my, uh, my sauce or my glaze. It's gonna be mangoes and honey. I'm gonna take the skin off the mango first. So I'm just gonna dice up my mangoes. They don't have to be perfectly diced because I'm gonna cook them and then I'm gonna puree them anyway. So let's make this mango glaze. A little bit of canola oil, some onion, a little bit of garlic. Okay, then we're gonna take our mangoes and some orange juice and some pineapple juice. The pineapple juice has a nice flavor to it, but you know what? If you don't have pineapple juice, orange juice would be just fine. A little ancho chili in there, and a little bit of white wine. We're actually using a Pinot Grigio. Let that cook down, cook out the alcohol, save the flavor of the grape. So you just wanna make sure that the, uh, the mangoes, the onions, and garlic are nice and soft. We're gonna puree this in a blender. Brush the mango glaze right on the chicken. You wanna glaze the chicken just about when it's done because there's honey and there's the natural sugars from the mango in here. Those sugars will actually cook and caramelize very quickly. Just a couple more minutes of cooking and then it'll be chicken time. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of chicken. I'll start with a drumstick. Mm, tons of flavor here. You can taste the spices and I just love the mango. I'm a huge mango fan. The mango and the honey glaze just uh, works so well with those big spices. And you, you can actually taste a little bit of the buttermilk. It gives it that sort of tangy flavor underneath. The thighs are my favorite for sure. Let's grill some chicken. I have the chicken cut into parts. I have the chicken breast and the chicken thigh. The thigh is actually my favorite part of the chicken. I love the flavor of it. It's also uh, the moistest part of the chicken as well. A lot of people like chicken breast. I totally understand that, so we're gonna use both. There's a, uh, an Italian technique of cooking chicken called alla matone, which means uh, under the brick. And so we're gonna take a brick and we're gonna cover it with some tin foil. If you don't have a brick, you can always use something heavy like a cast iron pan, you know, something like this. A cast iron pan might actually work as well. Sometimes what I do is I take the cast iron pan and I put the brick on top of it so it's nice and even. Let's just put a little salt and pepper down here, right on the skin side. Let's go to the grill. Really gonna put this at the slow part of the grill. We're gonna keep the thighs and the breast separate because the thighs will take a little bit longer to cook because the meat is darker. Now we're gonna season the other side with salt and pepper. And uh, if you notice, I didn't put any oil on the chicken breast because I fear that if we put oil on the chicken skin that we're really gonna create flare-ups. I'm gonna take a little more foil just to protect the chicken. Then we're gonna take a cast iron pan. Just balance it just like that. Then we can take our bricks just for some extra weight. And this really ensures a nice crisp skin, which is really the key for good chicken. Ta-da! All right, now we're gonna make the salsa verde. So salsa verde, you know, obviously the translation is green sauce, and that can mean lots of different things. But in our case, we're gonna use some Italian flat leaf parsley, some fresh tarragon, which has sort of that licorice flavor, some cornichon, which are like baby pickles, and uh, some capers for a nice sort of salty, briny flavor. I'm gonna put some garlic in there as well. And the secret ingredient, anchovies. Just don't tell anybody they're in there. They'll love it. So we're gonna put the herbs in our food processor. And you always want more herbs than you think you need. Once you start cutting them in the food processor, the amount is really gonna dissipate. Some garlic cloves, some capers, to take most of the, the brine out of there. And uh, some cornichon. A little white wine vinegar. Some salt and pepper. And then just a couple of anchovies. All right, so we're gonna start the food processor and I'm gonna add some olive oil. And we'll have salsa verde. Beautiful sauce. You see how easy that is? 
Let's just check on our chicken. See, what's happening is the fat is rendering nice and slowly, and that's what you want. We close the grill, and we're gonna let the chicken cook all the way through. So here's our chicken breasts. I'm just gonna cut this right through the bone. And the thigh we can just kind of keep intact. Then we can take some of our salsa verde. This is really just gonna wake up the flavor of the chicken. All right, so we'll take some of the breast, some of the thigh. That's the magic. I'm actually gonna do a little French-inspired thing. It's a play on chicken cordon bleu, which is usually ham and cheese inside a chicken and then fried. What I'm gonna do is take some of that inspiration, but I'm gonna grill it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pound this chicken, and I just put a little bit of water on both sides of the chicken so it doesn't stick to the, uh, to the plastic wrap. I'm just gonna carefully pound it out, and this will actually help the chicken cook very evenly. I don't want to pan it too thinly. A lot of times, like, it, like a classic chicken pyrite is really, really paper thin. I want to have a little bit of texture to my chicken. When I bite into it, I actually want to be able to taste the chicken as well. As you can see, it's going to be nice and even here. All right, so I'm going to put my chicken breast on the grill here. I season this with a little bit of canola oil and salt and pepper, and that's it. Just going to make sure that it's nice and even, high heat. We just want to get a nice sort of sear on top of the chicken breast. Wow, you got that nice and thin. Oh, yeah. And you can see how quickly the, uh, the chicken is going to cook here. Uh, it's almost cooked all the way through. I mean, when I turn it over, it's going to just be a couple more minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to the indirect part of the grill. OK, I got a nice crust on the outside there, which is exactly what I want. The other thing I'm going to do is actually put some lemons on the grill, because I love when you grill citrus. It gives it that sort of nice roasted uh, citrus flavor. And I'm going to make a vinaigrette out of this. Oh, that sounds great. You get some of that smokiness, and the juice comes out easier, right? Exactly right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a very thin slice of prosciutto. And actually, you know, they'll slice it very nice and thin for you. I'm just going to just put a layer of prosciutto on top. And then I'm going to take my triple creme cheese. Now, this stuff is really strong. Um, has fantastic flavor. Is it kind of like a brie? It's like a brie with a lot more flavor. It actually has the texture of brie. Here, it, it tastes a little bit. But it's, uh, wow, yeah, that's got, that's got some it's, kick. It's, it's definitely pungent. Oh, that's beautiful. That's going to be great on that chicken bottle. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> ham, ham and cheese on chicken, you know? It's a classic combo, but you've, uh, you've done it up in a new way. Exactly. All right, so I'm just going to put our cheese on top. As you can see, I have it on the indirect heat, mm -hmm. OK? I started on the direct heat, got a nice sear. Now I'm going to let it cook through and let the cheese and the prosciutto melt. Take a look at our lemons. Starting to get nicely grilled. I'm going to take a little bit of arugula and just put a little bit of arugula on top. It's kind of like a, you know, a salad on top of your entree. Extra virgin olive oil. And just squeeze some of this roasted lemon on top. OK, and a little salt and pepper. I'm going to let Mark give this a try. All right, Mark. Oh, man, Bobby, that looks beautiful. This is all you. Now, it's a pretty strong flavored cheese. Um, I don't know if that's like to your liking, or would you rather something a little bit more mild? No, it's perfect, Bobby. It adds some, some richness and earthiness. And with that little peppery arugula on top, it's beautiful. That oh. cheese is good. I'm not taking credit for the cheese, because I did not make the cheese. <laughs> it, is, it is good on that chicken. We're making some baseball food today. Chicken wings with a chipotle hot sauce and a blue cheese yogurt dipping sauce. Sometimes they use sour cream. We're going to use yogurt just so we feel like we're being healthy. OK, we need a pot. There we go. We have some, uh, some red wine vinegar. Now, this is the sauce that we're going to actually bake the chicken wings in after we grill them. Some honey, a little Dijon mustard, some Dijon, and then chipotle peppers. Now, this is what chipotles look like in a can. They're smoked jalapenos, and they come in this sort of adobo sauce, which is like a, like a red vinegar, sort of tomato-y marinade. And they sit in there, and then you can puree them up, like I did right here. And we can just put these right into the sauce. Remember, smoky and fiery. But the first thing we're going to do is heat it up right on the grill. So make sure your grill is hot. 
All right, while that's working, we're gonna make sort of the dipping sauce. When you go to a bar and you eat buffalo chicken wings, you know, you get sort of like this Tabasco-y kind of sauce, you know, very spicy, and then they serve it with like a blue cheese uh, dressing usually, and usually it's like sour cream and lots of blue cheese. Instead of that, we're gonna use yogurt, and you know I love to use that thick Greek yogurt because it has fantastic texture. Let's make a lot of this because we got a lot of chicken wings. We're gonna dice up a little red onion, and the red onion is obviously gonna add a lot of flavor to it, but also I want that crunch, you know, that, that sort of, that crispy crunch that you get with, uh, with really nice, fresh red onions. And we're gonna cut them rather fine, actually. Dice them up. Next up, some green onions. Paper thin if you can get them. Okay, red and the green. A little salt and pepper. And then the blue cheese. Now this is a crumble blue cheese. This is an American blue cheese, like a Maytag. If you notice, I haven't mixed it all together yet. I'm gonna make one fold so that the blue cheese stays nice and crumbled and it doesn't get messed up. Okay, that's done. Okay, let's go over to the sauce over here because it's boiling, which is exactly what we want to happen. So now we're gonna add the butter right to the sauce. All right, you can see this has actually come to a boil and that's a good thing because we wanna add the butter and not separate it. And this is gonna make a nice glaze for the chicken wings. Just melt the butter, whole butter, you know, unsalted whole butter. And we'll add it to the spicy sauce. Okay. Well, we're cooking some chicken wings here, and obviously you want to get them nice and crispy. You know, it starts getting, you know, a little crispy like this. You might want to turn it over. These are definitely ready. And we're gonna cook the chicken wings right in the sauce. All right, it's enough to start with. Hey, look, check that out. Now we have the wings in the sauce, and basically, just want to kind of toss them around a little bit. Just kind of glaze them in the spicy sauce. Wing time. Anybody hungry? All right, so we're gonna brine our chicken first. Buttermilk, salt, and sugar. Since we're going up against Gillian, who's got some apparently dynamite fried chicken, we decided we wanted to do something different this time. So we came up with a batter to dip the fried chicken in. Flour, cornstarch, equal parts. And then we're going to add smoked paprika and some cayenne, some chili di arbo. I'm just afraid that, that, this, that you're going to add too many spices. Oh. Hey, Bobby, you need some help? <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and then I'm going to add some water to thin it out. Don't want it to be too thin, don't want it to be too thick. Are you making a batter? Yeah, we, you know, we tried something new for you. Try You're bringing it. I'm looking forward to it. Gillian definitely has the swagger of a chicken master. I don't crowd the pan. I get that edge of brown going. I cook 1,100, 1,200 pieces of chicken a week. Let's pat it dry, and then I'm going to season it, and we'll start frying. Do you do a lot of fried chicken at home? I do, I do fried chicken at home and the restaurants. Oh, OK. Monday night at Bar American is fried chicken night. Oh. But it's not this recipe. <laughs> Will you consider changing it based on the results of tonight? <laughs> Everything's always a work in progress. I agree, I agree. After a dip in our batter, we're able to start frying some of our chicken, but the oil in most of our pots just isn't cooperating. You're almost at 340. That's so funny, I turned it off, and it still keeps still going, going up. up. I know. That oil's too hot, and that oil's too cold. It's really hard to deep fry like that. That's very, that's very challenging. It's hard for that to stay hot. Is this on? No, it's not. All right, l l let me do it. Let me do it, please. Can I, can I come on that side? <laughs> can you believe it? I can't believe it. Why did the fried chicken cross the road? <laughs> but we've isolated the problem, so we can finally get frying. We have five pieces done. How many people here? A lot. <laughs> We're gonna pull it together, we always do. Team play will prevail. 
Chef, what are you looking for in color and texture? To me, that seems like a good color. It's a little crispy on the outside. Now the question is, is it cooked through? Is it overcooked? Is it undercooked? Hopefully it's just cooked. I'm really excited to taste this fried chicken. I'm always on the quest for really good fried chicken that I don't have to cook. We finally get into a groove. Looks good. But before we feed the masses, it's time to trade chickens and see if I stand a chance. Well, I can hear you crunching, and that's, that's a good sign. It's delicious. So well seasoned, perfectly cooked. This is very good, too. I think I may have found the other fried chicken that I'm not cooking. It's got a really light, kind of crunchy batter. It's very tender and has a lot of juiciness, and I think it can taste the butter milk a whole lot. We're going to take our chicken tenders and let it marinate or tenderize with some buttermilk. And that's one of the things that buttermilk does. It tenderizes meats. It obviously gives it a little bit of that, that sort of tangy flavor as well. It's also going to promote uh, a nice juicy chicken. So we're just gonna let this marinate for about 30 minutes or so. Now we're gonna move on to our waffle mixture. I have a classic buttermilk waffle recipe that I use. One and three quarters cup of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and then a little bit of salt, three tablespoons of sugar, All right, those are our dry ingredients. Then we need three eggs, a little bit of melted unsalted butter, and one and a half cups of buttermilk. I find that buttermilk, first of all, you taste a little bit of that sort of tang running through the buttermilk, but also it makes a very, very tender uh, waffle. Okay. So we have all our ingredients, and then I'm just going to fold in the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients, and then we'll have our waffle batter. We're gonna let the waffle batter sit for 30 minutes or so as well. We can start frying our chicken and making our waffles. So we have some chicken tenders in here that we were marinating in some buttermilk, and I like to dip my chicken twice into the seasoned flour. So we're going to make basically two dredges of the, uh, of the flour mixture. Obviously, we're gonna start with all-purpose flour, and then we're gonna season it. A little bit of cayenne, whoops. a little bit of uh, garlic powder and some onion powder, and salt and pepper. All right, so then we're going to take some buttermilk. We need a wet dredge and a dry dredge. Man, we got a lot of buttermilk today. And then some hot sauce for some flavor. And if you notice, I season every layer, no matter what it is. Salt and pepper. And we're gonna start by putting the chicken in the flour, then it back into the buttermilk, and then back into the flour. I mean, you can put all kinds of different seasonings in here if you want. To me, the most important thing is that it actually has, you know, seasoning and it's flavored. Because otherwise, you're gonna get some bland chicken. All right, here we go. You know, this is just the white meat. There's no skin on it. There's no bones in it. And they're not that thick. So this is gonna cook pretty quickly. When these get golden, they're done. So while those are cooking, let's get our waffles going. Wanna make sure that our waffle iron is on high. I'm gonna paint these with a little bit of butter. And I don't like to make perfect waffles in terms of shape. I like them to be misshapen just because then they look like they're homemade. All right, so we're gonna let those cook. All right, we got our fried chicken ready to go. Now all we need is some waffles. And then we can take some of our chicken. And this is a pretty simple presentation. and then a little bit of honey. And a little bit of hot sauce. A little salt and pepper. All right, let's give it a try. So good. You can taste the tanginess of the buttermilk. So you have the crispiness on the outside, the tender, light and fluffy waffle on the inside. I think the buttermilk has a lot to do with that. And then you have the crispy fried chicken with lots of flavor. And to me, this is uh, actually one of the most perfect dishes in America, period.